Okay, from this video, we're gonna be talking about people in the box, okay? We're not just talking about players in the box. We're talking about fans yelling to players, falling into the box with the players, hurling equipment at each other, and some other unforgettable moments that may or may not occur when players get told to sit in the sin bin. The penalty box sure is a very special place in hockey. Of course, its original intent is as the game's jailhouse. Penalized players were just told to go serve their sentence for two or five or 10 or however many it was back then, I don't really know. But even back then, when players went to go to the penalty box, they're usually known for displaying quite the range of emotions. See, back in the day, the players that received a penalty didn't even have to go to the other side of the ice from where their players' benches. In fact, there was no glass to protect the players between each other. And the NHL stupidly put the penalty boxes side by side. And guess what? People fought in the penalty box. This was this is a true story. The NHL did quickly change this rule, so we're not gonna be talking about that too much. But anyways, back to the video. In this video, we're gonna be talking about more modern day occurrences in the penalty box, more moments of flabbergast, if you will. So let's start with a classic. The penalty box was just a second home for Ty Domi. The enforcer made his living fighting after all. He was at least hanging there for five minutes every game pretty much. But in this particular instance, he got some company because the glass barrier behind the box gave way and this Philadelphia Flyers fan came tumbling in to enjoy Ty Domi's company. The good thing is that the linesmen were right there to protect the fan from Domi's practice fists. And for his trouble, the fan got cut on his head and was charged by the Philadelphia Police Department. That's a pretty good award, I'm just gonna say. Here comes a fan from the second row, Chris Falcone. Down he goes, glass breaks. Next, this confrontation doesn't get too physical, but during the 2002 Stanley Cup Final, this Carolina Hurricanes fan yells at literally every single Detroit Red Wing who finds himself in the sin bin. Well, Brendan Shanahan had a response. He either suggests that she shave her armpits, or that she's lacking in the deodorant department. Either way, he got his point across pretty good. Sometimes subtlety is the best response. <laughs> we go from that to a far friendlier player fan penalty box interaction. The Boston Bruins' Milan Lucic and one of the Vancouver Canucks' Greenman fans seems to be having a pleasant chat as Lucic serves penalty. A little nice little chat with them, laughing. Look at this, this is a Vancouver loving. Sometimes, no one else is necessary for an angry player to make a scene. And a mess. And that was the case here as Montreal Canadiens' Dougie Gilmore slams the penalty box door so hard that the glass shatters. Clean up on IO penalty box. The officials had to clean the next one up in another way. So angry he just slammed the door and the glass <laughs> door. I've never ever Stay seen that. that. Vancouver Canucks' Daniel Sedin is called in for a penalty because of this infraction against the Los Angeles Kings' Drew Doughty. We're back at a commercial break, but wait! It's not Daniel on the penalty box. It's Henrik! And just how did they get the players wrong? Well, they happen to be two of the best twin brothers to ever play on the same hockey team. Jump over Drew Doughty, a little bit of a headlock, and you see the referee right there. From the wrong player to the wrong box. David Legwin is a member of the Ottawa Senators here, but he played with the Nashville Predators for the majority of his career. And in this game in Nashville, Leguan has a flashback to the stays of the Pred, and after being called in for a penalty, he goes to the home box instead of the away one. Wow. 956 games as a Predator. Oh, I went to the wrong penalty box. All right, so we know that keeping one's head is pretty important in penalty box situations, but that's pretty much always easier with a correct helmet. And that's just something that Buffalo Sabres' Corey Conacher clearly is not handed here. After the officials has cleaned up the ice in a following scrum on the ice, instead, the 5'8", 185-pound Conacher gets the lid of a 6'8", 260-pound teammate, John Scott. He looks pretty silly in that. <laughs> Corey Conacher a little bit yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna work. <laughs> but this penalty box moment involving equipment 
is at the opposite end of the spectrum as the New York Islanders Brad Bisder and the Florida Panthers Brad Ferenc hurl pieces of their equipment at each other and try to duck the flying gear coming back from their respective penalty boxes. This is like food fight in the penalty box. Come on, guys. Now they're going to come over. <laughs> One of those classic, a classic old time. The Arizona Coyotes, David Moss, also loses some equipment, one of his gloves, but surprisingly not on purpose. And as you see it, it drops back into the penalty box as the door is closing. He gets back during the next play stoppage and having to go to the bench after he came out of the box. Loses his glove. <laughs> And he turns, looks back, the gate's already shut. We can't quite figure out the motivation of this green man. With the Calgary Flames' Mike Calamari in the penalty box, the green man holds something with the names and numbers of all-time NHL greats and NHL Hall of Famers, such as Mario Lemieux and Calamari's former Calgary teammate Jerome McGinla. He held it against the glass so Calamari could see it. We're still trying to figure out what the hell this green man's intent really was. But some players just get mad at inanimate objects, such as the camera in the penalty box. And this is what Martin the Point of the Boston Bruins does here. I would sure like to know what that camera did to deserve all of this. Martin the Point is hitting an inanimate object. There's absolutely no question that needs to be asked in this next one, because all-time great and Hall of Famer Phil Esposito is mad during the 1972 Summit Series between Canada and, of course, the Soviet Union. Esposito makes his displeasure with the referee crystal clear with loud words and unmistakable gestures. 12.39 is the time of the penalty. And Canada's lost the advantage. The Los Angeles Kings drew Doughty is also not a really a fan of this penalty that lands him in the sin bin. So he continues his tirade aimed at the referee as he sits down and he makes himself pretty comfortable in the sin bin. And sometimes after a penalty, the only thing that a player can do is give up. This player signals by using his stick and a towel to raise the white flag and surrender to the powers that have landed him in the penalty box. Curse you, hockey gods! I'm sure it is, and the message is there. Maybe, just maybe, the point Esposito and Doughty would have had different reactions if they had encountered this young fan in the sin bin. The Tampa Bay Lightning fan clearly likes to talk, and it doesn't matter which member of the Colorado Avalanche is sitting in the box, the guy just wants to talk, to communicate, or at least to get the attention of one of the hockey players. He's a waiver. He's trying to say hey, he's a waiver. This time, our attention is not just on one player in the box. In fact, after a shift brawl in a game between the Vancouver Canucks and the Calgary Flames, I'm sure a lot of you remember, this is the John Tortorella moment, all of the skaters who are on the ice are now in the sin bin for both teams. The penalty boxes are so full that only three players can sit down in each box. The others, they gotta stand. No question about it, when you get these kind of guys and you know the, the rivalry between the two teams, this clearly makes uh, a lot of sense from what we, we saw with the starting lineup. The Winnipeg Jets and Nashville Predators have even more players in the box with six each. Winnipeg's Andrew Kopp actually takes a seat on top of the edge of the divider between the box and the timekeeper. With 12 players in the penalty boxes, that must have meant that there's a little bit of space on the players' benches across the ice. Not quite as crowded is this penalty box containing four members of the Nashville Predators as they sort out which gloves belong to which player after a fight, and all of the pushing and shoving goes with it. But at least here, all the people in the penalty box are hockey players. And the referee's still trying to sort out. It's everyone on the ice in the box right now. There's five in the box for Winnipeg. They're gonna run out of room and five done. for the Predators. It's a full house. <laughs> After knocking out legendary icon Bobby Orr of the Boston Bruins with an elbow in the year 1969, the Toronto Maple Leafs' Pat Quinn 
was not alone in the box, but he was joined by those in the crowd who were seated around the box in the Boston Garden after the glass that separated the fans from the box was shattered. Quinn was ultimately removed from the box and sent to the locker room to serve his penalty. Can you imagine that? Having to go to the locker room to serve out a penalty? Wham! Now he said, wait a minute, he hit me with an elbow. Now he's out cold. Despite being all alone in the box, the Montreal Canadiens' Andrew Shaw has enough rage for a few people as he is so upset about this penalty that he destroys his stick and continues to route the referee. Thankfully for him, the NHL will pay for it and just send him another one, but those things used to be really expensive and they're still 200 bucks if you want a good stick, but back then, holy cow. You get your stick up, Shaw's not happy as he destroys that stick in the box. You see the frustration, you're battling. Did you know that Vegas Golden Knights' Jonathan Marshall so only yells when the penalty timekeeper won't let him out of the box? Well, Marshall so just thought it was time for him to be let out. The disagreement continues until finally Marshall so is allowed to get out of the box and return to the ice. Guess what? He was wrong! <laughs> Jonathan Marshall not so happy there as he was serving the extra minor and he's trying to get out of the penalty box. Decides he's going to do it on his own. He gets a little help from Perron, but they say no. <laughs> the Toronto Maple Leaf star Nazem Kadri gets admonished by the NHL off-ice official in the penalty box after slamming the penalty box door and his stick down in anger so bad that which is the reason why he was sent to the box in the first place for his anger issues. I'm sorry, I don't like him. I know I'm a Flames fan, but come on, man. This guy's a crybaby. He always has been. Finally, we're going to end this video with the incident that led to each team having its own separate penalty box. If you remember from the beginning where I briefly mentioned this, this was not the case in 1963. Penalty boxes were shared. If two players from the opposing team took penalties at the same time, they served the time sitting right next to each other. And there was no real security in the box either, only an attendant who was usually just a retiree. And he did not sit between the players, but next to one of them. But in this 1963 game, the Toronto Maple Leafs Bob Pulford and the Montreal Canadiens Terry Harper got five minute majors for fighting. So, in the penalty box next to each other after having a pretty good share of hands, like, they decided, hey, you want another knuckle sandwich? Here you go, Mo. And guess what? That moment, on that night, in that penalty box, is the reason why every single penalty box you'll ever see today is only fit for one team a game. NHL President Clarence Campbell, whose seat at the gardens was adjacent to the penalty box. And there you have it. Those are the most unforgettable penalty box moments that we could think of in NHL history. Of course, we probably missed some, so comment if you have favorites, either from this video or from yourself. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Don't be a bender. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, help the algorithm, help us grow, and see you next time.